In these examples, we're going to discuss how to find function values given a graph. This first example asks us to find f of 1. And just to um, do a quick, quick review of what this function notation means, if we translate this function notation f of 1 into words, it simply means find y when x equals 1. In other words, we're just being given an x value and we're being asked to find a y value. So the number that you're being given here in parentheses is the x value and the number that we find will be the corresponding y value. Finding function values given a graph really just involves three simple steps. The first step is to find the x value on the x-axis. So in this first example, we're going to mark the value of 1 on the x-axis. The second step then is to go to the graph. So I'm going to trace my pencil down to the graph. And when I land on the graph, my third step is to go over and trace my pen over to the y-axis. And I land on a value of negative 9 on the y-axis. So we would say f of 1 equals negative 9. This third example asks us to find f of negative 4. So we're going to follow the same three-step process. We're first going to mark negative 4 on the x-axis. The second step is to go to the graph. So I'm going to trace my pencil to the graph. In this case, I'm going to trace up to the graph. And when I get there, my third step is to trace over to the y-axis. And I land on a y-value of 4. So we will say that f of negative 4 is equal to positive 4. Now let's relate this to simply ordered pairs on a graph. If I look at the ordered pair that corresponds to this point on the graph, it is in fact 1, negative 9. And if we look at the ordered pair that corresponds to this point on the graph, it is actually negative 4, 4. So we can see how these function values are related to simply ordered pair points on the graph. Let's look at this second example, f of negative 7. And let's follow the same three-step process to find the result for f of negative 7. I'm first going to mark negative 7 on the x-axis. My second step then is to trace my pencil to the graph. So I'm going to trace down to the graph. Notice that as I approach the graph, I approach this open circle. Now the open circle implies that the graph does not exist at that point. Therefore, there is no corresponding y value for that point or for that x value of negative 7. And so we say that f of negative 7 is undefined. So we use that fancy word undefined to say that there is no corresponding y value when x is negative 7 because the graph does not exist at that point. This graph is a very nice graph to work with because it has these grid marks and each of the values on the x and y axis are very clearly marked. And so it's relatively easy to find our function values. But not all graphs are going to be as easy to work with. So let's look at a second graph and a fourth example. Take a look at this graph where not all of the tick marks are defined. And we don't have that nice grid like we did before. We're being asked to find f of negative 20 using this graph. And we can start to do that by following the same three-step process. So thank goodness that the value of x equals negative 20 is pretty clearly marked on this graph. And so I can go to the x-axis and mark the value of negative 20. Then my second step is to go to the graph. So I'm going to trace my pencil up to the graph. Notice that I approach a closed circle, which implies that the graph is defined there. In other words, the graph does exist at this point. And so we can proceed to the third step, which is to trace over to the y-axis. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit more work to determine what y-value this tick mark represents. So notice that we're being told that this top tick mark here is 20. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tick marks on the y-axis. 
That implies that each tick mark represents a step of four. So the first tick mark represents a y value of four. The second tick mark represents a y value of eight. This third tick mark represents a y value of 12. And the fourth tick mark represents a value of 16. And then notice, if we let that pattern continue, the next tick mark does, in fact, equal a y value of 20. And so we can now say that f of negative 20 equals 12.